What's up guys? Coach Nate here with Fleet Heat, here to talk about one of my favorite running drills on the planet. Can you guess what it is? It is cadence. I'm gonna show you how this is the connect everything drill, how it brings everything together. I'm gonna to talk about even the, the ranges that we should be in for cadence from an ideal standpoint. And I'm gonna even give you some progressions at the end so you can improve yours. Let's get going. So running cadence is the number of times your foot hits the ground in a given period. We usually like to count in a 60 second period and I usually like to count on one leg. So when we talk about numbers, we might say 60 or 70 or 80 or 90. It's the number of times your right foot hits the ground in that time period. And it's so important because when we start to fatigue, when our form starts to break down, when we run, we actually get heavier with our landings, our cadence drops. If you've been told you are maybe a heel striker or someone you overstride, it's usually a symptom that your cadence is lower. And so by focusing on cadence, it reverses course with everything. It improves your posture because you have to have better posture to pick those feet up. You have better muscular engagement, your shoulders are a little bit more relaxed, your arm swing has to get going a little bit more because your arms always match your legs when you run and you lead to lighter landings as well. So next section, let's talk about what ideal cadences are and how to find your own. So when we're dealing with cadence with most runners, more often than not, people tend to be too low in their numbers. Their cadence isn't high enough. And that's that posture stuff that I was talking about before, that overstriding and those heavier landings. So what is ideal, Coach Nate, you may ask? Well, let me tell you. Everyone's leg length is gonna be a little bit different. And there's gonna be some legs that are gonna be a little bit longer, some a little bit shorter. And so we're really gonna talk about a range of cadence versus any specific number. The place where we wanna see most runners is in that 85 to 90 steps per minute, again, counting only on one leg. There's of course gonna be some variation here. Sometimes that cadence may be even higher if you're running a little bit faster. It may be a little bit lower if you're running a little bit slower, but we still wanna be in that range. We're gonna talk about how to set your own cadence by first establishing what your baseline is and the best way to establish your baseline guys is to count you're gonna run relaxed regular whatever feels comfortable for you and you're just gonna look at your watch and count your steps on one foot for that 60 second period that is going to be your base cadence next I'll tell you what you can do with that number so setting that baseline cadence is so important because if that cadence is a little bit lower, especially if you're in the 60s or the 70s, trying to make a really big jump really quickly isn't gonna be successful in the long run. Our body likes to adapt to small changes layered over time. If I can pile one small change over another one, over a longer period, I'm gonna to get to that bigger change. I'm gonna do it in a sustainable way that's also going to be healthy. So let's say I've established my baseline cadence and let's say it's 70 or 75. What I'm gonna to start to work on are gonna be some base plus intervals where we're gonna start with a base plus one interval where I'm just gonna run at a 76 cadence. The next week I'm gonna do a base plus two then a base plus three, then a base plus four, and finally a base plus five. So over a couple weeks, I've improved my average cadence over five steps per minute. It seems like a small change, and that's kind of the point. Those small changes add up big over time, and they allow your body to adapt. Next section, we're gonna talk about some traps you wanna avoid when you start to improve your cadence, like trying to run too fast. Now, a fun little reminder on how run speed works. Your run speed is a function of your cadence, how many steps you take in a minute, as well as your stride length, how long your actual steps are. And the biggest mistake I see runners making when they improve their cadence is they start picking their feet up faster 
but they keep the same stride length, which really means they're starting to run faster all the time. And you're like, oh man, Coach Nate, this is super hard. I'm just really having a hard time maintaining my cadence at these higher numbers. And you are because you're just running faster. So I love to use a little metronome like this. One, it gives me that audible cue. And it's also a reminder, hey, I'm running at a 90 cadence right now and I'm not moving. I'm just picking up my feet because I've got zero stride length. So I can literally separate these two things by shortening my stride as I pick my cadence up, that's gonna maintain the same speed and that's gonna help me out. Notice I started running and jogging in place. I want you to do the same thing for this drill as well. Now, I wouldn't be much of a coach if I didn't remind you guys of the big run training program that we are doing with Brooks. It kicks off March 29th, that is next week. You have this amazing 10 week program. It could be in person at a local Fleet Feet. It could be virtual, all leading up to the big run, which is our way of celebrating Global Running Day. Click the link below this video to sign up, learn more, see it in there. And if you loved this cadence, well, I got another great run drill video for you. It's a pulling drill. It is basically how this whole cadence things works. We don't just push off the ground, we pull our feet up off the ground too. That and more over there. I'll see you in that next video.